Hi, I'm Tanya with Tanya Barron's Real Estate Group. I'm Greg Anderson with Caliber Home Loans. worked together since my very first transaction. Yeah. He's been one of my preferred lenders ever since. So super excited to interview you today. Hear a little oh, bit more. Yeah, hear a little bit more about what's going on in the market. What was also cool is that Greg works in Renton and lives in Renton. So yep. We're super happy that we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, I've been in Renton almost my whole life. So awesome. I'm excited to do it. Good, great. Wow, so crazy story, but I was working for King County and was a finance manager there, ended up looking for a career change, contacted one of my friends who happened to be my mortgage loan officer at the time, and he said, well, man, you should come work for me. So it took me about six months to make that decision, but decided to get into the mortgage business, and uh, that was 17 years ago, almost 18 years ago. So really, really cool business to be in. I really kind of nerd out about financing, but in it, using that skill set to help people achieve their goals and their dreams of home ownership and then future wealth is really, really cool. Well, that's awesome. And one of the reasons I really trust you with my clients is because you do nerd out on it and you know it very well. You actually have a degree in finance too. So it's really helped you be an asset to my clients and help me grow in my business and learn about it. So. I think Renton has gotten a bad name. I've I've, I've lived in Renton for over 50 years. 50. So I know. So yeah, I, it literally, I feel like people have been bad mouthing Renton for many, many years. And a lot of it is just unfounded, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, there's the downtown area got a little rough for a little while. Some of the buildings need to be revitalized. But like you said, that's happening. We've got the Rain City Market. We yeah. have a lot of new shops down there, restaurants. There's Macadons or yeah, something so that just opened. Macadons is opening. Like, you know, they've got the arcade down there for the kids. Like. It, there's a lot of good things happening down in that area. The landing, I mean, Top Golf, and now we're hearing that Amazon Fresh is coming in. So we were getting a lot of attention from the top stores and venues and things like that in Renton. And I think, look, the whole 405 corridor and eventually the I-5 corridor is just gonna fill in. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna keep filling in with city after city after city and Bellevue is really close to Renton. Bellevue is getting maxed out. People are just gonna have to go either south or they're gonna have to go north. So far, historically, people have chosen to go north, which is why property values in Kirkland are higher and that type of thing. As they start pushing south, because now you have to go further north, to get the same price of home, to get the right. same price of commercial space and all that, people are gonna say, you know what, Renton's not that bad. We're gonna move down here. Mm -hmm. Like you, I mean, you've lived here your whole life yeah. too. Like, we're just fine uh, <laughs> going to schools, you know, down here in Renton and yeah. everything like that. Like, I think a lot of people just believe the anecdotal stories of whether that's crime or maybe say the schools aren't as good. I, I don't really buy into that. So no. I, I think Renton's a great spot. Yeah, I'm actually writing a chapter for a real estate book and we're talking about Renton, just the perceptions that people have had about Renton. I was talking about how passionate I am to change that. And right. I think it's just, I don't know, I've always kind of fought for the underdog and right. just want to be like, no, we are greater <laughs> than you guys assume. But right. Honestly, there was some times where there wasn't too much to tout about Renton, right. but I definitely think that's changing. One of the things I really like about Renton too is that I think it's one of the most centrally located cities that yeah. you could live in. So you commute to Bellevue, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, on a good day, 20 minutes, <laughs> maybe at two o'clock in the morning. On, depends on what time. Yeah, and yeah. what part of Renton. But you quick commute to Seattle, if you yep. work south in Auburn or Tacoma, you're right by the airport, multitudes of shopping from Tuckwiller or South Center, all the way yeah. to you know, Bellevue Square, and then again, the landing with everything that we have going on there. I think it's great. And then the more I've really dove in, even though born and raised here, but obviously doing what I'm doing now, I'm learning so much more about Renton, right? And yep. 
it just warms my heart about all the activities that we have. I mean, every single day, if you look at my social media, it's another, you know, pop by here, come here. Right. And uh, I mean, I don't know enough about all the other cities if they do that, but they're really trying to be community focused and just meeting everybody that cares so much out yeah. there. It's a really great I, place to be. I think that the people that live in Renton and have been around Renton for a long time, they definitely have a lot of passion for the city. Mm -hmm. The Renton River Days is a big deal. Just the fact that Renton as a city has been progressive enough to try to change. That the city leadership is really trying to change mm -hmm. that. They're looking at what stores they're bringing in, what businesses they're bringing into town and making sure that those align with the ultimate goals. Mm -hmm. And like, hey, we have the only top golf in the state of Washington. I know. That's a big deal, right? They could have put that in Seattle. They could have put that in Bellevue. They could have put that anywhere. They decided to put it down, down there at the Renton Landing. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take off. And as a golfer, I'm really excited about that. We have another golf course that's owned and operated by the city of Renton, Maplewood Golf Course. Mm -hmm. And then there's a private country club in Renton as well, Fairwood. So yeah. there's lots of amenities that people don't know about and they just don't give themselves a chance because they're on 405 and they cruise through the S-curves and all mm -hmm. of a sudden they're in Tukwila and they totally blinked and missed Renton. Yes. Right? Yeah, so. definitely. Well, speaking of Fairwood, that's yeah. where you live. Yep. And I've actually met a lot of small business owners. It's pretty mm -hmm. exciting. I don't know if you've been to the new strip where the Four Corners merchants and stuff, right. but they're coming up and there's going to be an espresso bar there. Yep. So that little nook that was just kind of overlooked for a long time is starting to really get some cool stuff in there as well. Yeah, it is. That shopping center, so of course that wasn't there when I was a little kid. We used mm -hmm. to ride our bikes on that piece of land. But <laughs> that shopping center has gone through a couple of changes, right? Mm -hmm. So it came up, it had Albertsons in there yep. and, and had quite a few good shops. And then of course everything goes through changes. And so Albertsons shut down and then when you lose that flagship store like that, then the other tenants sometimes struggle. And so mm -hmm. they've turned over, but I'm really excited about the stuff that's coming in there now. Yeah. There's a new Mod Pizza up there. There's a new Starbucks. They moved the Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And there's really some great stuff up there that people, again, don't know. If they don't live there on that right. plateau, but it's not that far from Renton, from other parts of Renton, to go up there and visit those stores either. So. Yeah. It's a, oh, it's a great spot. You know, it's funny is my family actually owned a Sweet Harmony Bible bookstore that was up there years ago. Oh, really? And I actually always forget about it. <laughs> and my mom was laughing because it was basically, I think it was right by Fairwood Nails. It's somewhere right there by yeah. um, Hudson Photography was there way yep. back, 30 years back. Yep. So there was a breezeway mm -hmm. in there and yes. there was Dahlstrom's I video. I remember. There was Dahlstrom's video. There was a, a candy store called O oh Fudge. Uh, there was a uh, there was a, a popcorn place that had all the different flavors of popcorn called popcorn patties. Um, My favorite. I know it was so good. And then then the bookstore, right? Okay. The bookstore was all in that breezeway. That is now I would venture to say that's probably LA Fitness. Okay. Yeah, I was I trying think, to remember. I was young, you know, obviously. Right. Not obviously, but. <laughs> but yeah, so there was a couple of breezeways up there. There used to be an ice cream store, where which now got gobbled into Safeway, but it was called the Big Scoop. That was always a favorite when I was a kid. We had the Fairwood Pharmacy, which is now Bartels. I remember, yeah. And the Fairwood Pharmacy was a big family-owned pharmacy that had lots of gifts and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, of course, in, in addition. So that was tough to see them change. Yeah. I, I mean, Bartels is great. They're a locally owned chain, but. That Fairwood Pharmacy was like really cool to have in the neighborhood because if you forgot your mom on Mother's Day, you go up there and there's yeah. a nice gift there. So. Yeah, it was kind of like a <laughs> Bartels meets Hallmark. but Right. So lots of different iterations. You mentioned Hudson Photography was up there and you know, they moved out, but I know Bruce and uh, Josh are still around. Yep. So I see them from time to time and it's just cool. I think there's a lot of people that don't know about Fairwood. Mm-hmm. By the way, one of the only Shakey's pizzas. I was just going to say, in, I've been there in, a lot in the lately. In state of Washington. So uh, Shakey's Pizza is, is one of our favorites, but it's just been cool to see all the changes go through, including me. Yeah. Changes in me. So. <laughs> we started going to Shakey's after T-Ball, and now mm. my son does not think that that's, you just go play video games yeah. and, and eat food. Like right. that's what you do. And so if there's a place that doesn't have that, then... Right. He's not interested. That's so. the, it's still the old school pizza place where you yes. went there, you ate some pizza, drank some pop, but then you played video games is really what you did. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's cool to see that they're still holding it down. Yeah, definitely. 17 years, a yes. lot of change. 
Lots like, of change. Lots of change. Lots of change. Any like highs, lows, any <laughs> well, stories probably you the, think Probably about? the high and low is like when I got in the business, I worked for Washington Mutual. So that's that was, you know, kind of fun for a minute. Yeah. And then uh, Washington Mutual now is no longer in. But the cool thing is for me is I've just always stayed the course of my main goal is to help families create wealth through real estate. So as I'm helping more clients with that and I'm taking good care of them, I've been able to build a team. You can't get past a certain level without a team, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been able to build a team of professionals that have been in the industry for a long, long time, some of them longer than me. And they also have that same willingness and want to take care of clients and really educate people. And so that's really, I think, what's been the biggest high for me is be able to take other people on this ride with mm -hmm. me. So Yeah. What about a low? Low was the tough spot was I got in in the end of 2004. And so okay. now I was with Washington Mutual. I left Washington Mutual, of course, had to, went to Wachovia. They went out of business in like six months. So there was a period of time there where I was with several companies and they just kept going out of business. So it was a very, very weird time mm -hmm. in the market. But we're through that and haven't really looked back ever since. I've been with Caliber now going on three years. Prior to that, I was with Penrith Home Loans, as you know, for nine years. Some people move around a lot in our business. I would try not to move around, but there's always reasons for moving to take the best care of our clients. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's not even close to the same as 2008. Uh, demographics are one thing. So at that point in time, we were seeing that we were not having as many buyers in the market, just people coming of age and wanting to buy homes. That was on a down trend while home builders were building at a feverish pace heading into 2008. Mm -hmm. So you had inventory rising, demand falling, and for everybody who's taken Econ 101, we know that when you have more supply than demand, that's gonna drive prices down. What's happening right now is we're having a little bit of a lull in demand and a little bit of an increase in supply. The reason for that is that in the first six months of this year, prices were going crazy, mm -hmm. right? And so they were they were up sharply, then kind of dropping back down. So people didn't know what to expect. So you have a certain amount of panic buyers and sellers always. In the first quarter, people were panicking. I've got to buy a house because rates are going up. I'm going to miss out on these rates, right? So they're rushing in. They're paying 100, 200, 300 thousand dollars over the asking price. So then the sellers now they're like, hey, my neighbor. Put their house on the market for eight hundred thousand. They got one point one million. Right. I'm gonna put my house on the market. By the time they got their house ready to put on the market, the market had softened. So a lot of those people that went in and maybe listed their home for one point one, they had to lower it a little bit to find where the market actually is. So some people will say, oh, the market's going down. Yes, the market is going down from March thirty first, but from January 1st to March 31st, there was a 30% increase in home prices in King County. That's annualized over 100%. That's not going to be sustainable ever. So right. we knew it was going to come back down. We just didn't know exactly how much. Rates kept going. So at one point, rates topped out at around 6%. They've now settled back down. So we're seeing buyers come back to the market. There's more inventory because of all those people that weren't selling their homes for a few months. Right. Tacked onto the normal inventory that comes on in the summertime. My prediction is that we will have multiple offers on most homes again, probably early next year. Okay. So I don't think this is going to last for very long. If you look at what interest rates have done to buying power, I, I understand there are some people that it's pushed them out of the market. But if you look at the median income in King County, that person last year got an 8% year over year raise. Okay. So if your payment has gone up, it isn't completely unmanageable right. if you right. have, or one of those people that have gotten a raise, not everybody, of course. Yeah. Got a raise. <laughs> okay. That makes yeah. sense. Before we actually started this interview, I was just talking to Simone, one of the agents on my team, and she said that she did a statistics class yesterday yeah. and the median home prices from this year to last year, are basically the same. So people, again, think that there's just catastrophic change, 
but really, you know, it's staying kind of neutral. And last year at this time, everyone thought they were getting a great deal. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, so right. that's the mind shift that needs or mindset shift that needs to happen is right. that you're still getting top dollar, but for buyers, you're also not competing at this point against you know, maybe 20 other ones and right. overly I mean, you know, we, stressing yourself out. How long has it been since you've seen buyers get their selling costs, their closing costs paid for by I a know. seller? Like that's happening right now. We just got one today where they're getting a $5,000 credit from the seller. So yeah. there's options for buyers. It has not been that way for five years, really. Yeah. Five years it's been that you've had to bid over the asking, You've had to waive your financing, waive your appraisal, put non-refundable earnest money out there. It's been a really heavy seller's market. Mm -hmm. It's been really, really tough. So right now, if you're a buyer, right now is the time because you can get those closing costs paid for. You can get the price maybe at the asking price or maybe even a little low in some, some cases. And then when rates go back down, you can refinance. But if you wait till rates go back down, when everybody else floods back into the market, you're just going to be competing. You're going to end up paying $100,000 more for the house. So any benefit you get from a lower rate, you're going to offset because the price is going to be higher. So the problem is you asked this question about 2008. The one thing I would say for everybody who did not own a home at that point in time. So if you're too young to have owned a home back in 2008, what you don't know is that if you would have held on to that home and not let it go into foreclosure, if you could have, and you would have waited until 2016, your home price would have come back to where it was when you bought it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now from 16 to 21, we have seen almost a hundred percent increase. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a doubling of prices. If for all those people that said, Oh my gosh, I want to avoid 2008. I get it. But if you didn't have to sell, you wouldn't have lost. Right. 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 But people freaked out. It had never happened before, or not since the Great Depression. So they're like, oh my gosh, I got to get out of this right now because my house is worth less. Same thing happens in the stock market. Mm -hmm. I bought shares of Apple stock and it went down $5. So I got to sell it because it's going to go down more. No, hold on to it. And then it's going to be worth more. In There's a lot, there really is a lot, but I don't say one. I'll just say the, the theme that really resonates with me are those people who they're not really saving any money. They're not, they're not working jobs where they're gonna be able to save a lot of money, mm -hmm. but yet we figure out how to get them into a house. And then two, three, four years down the line, they call me and they say, hey, we've decided we wanna buy a bigger house. And we look at how much equity they have gained in that house. And it might be four or $500,000. It's a lot of money that people have made, especially over the last, say, 10 years. The appreciation rates have been so high that people have made money that they would have never made in yeah. their entire life. They would never been able to save that kind of money. Right. And so that really resonates with me because mm -hmm. I know it's tough when people are renting an apartment for fifteen or eighteen hundred dollars and now you're talking about trying to take on a three thousand dollar a month house payment you're really like stressed out about that, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to look further down the line, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just look at what's in front of you. Clearly you need to have a budget in that, but you can't just look at what is the immediate result of your decision. You have to think about down the line because that's really where wealth is created. Yeah. And I'm seeing people, I have clients now that are choosing to rent their house out, which I love, right? They're renting their house out and they're buying another house. So mm -hmm. now they're going to have two houses growing for them. Mm -hmm. I have one client. He actually moved to Spokane now. I think we're up to like six houses. He's just got under contract on his sixth house. Wow. And he's probably early thirties, I think. Wow. Um, and the funny thing about that is I know his parents. And so he came up to me at the golf club one day and he says, Hey, I really want to learn about real estate. He just got out of college. And do you mind if I call you? And now he's not even 10 years later and he owns six houses all growing for him. So if you think about fast forward 20 years when he's 50 ish, mm -hmm. early fifties, he's going to have a heck of a real estate portfolio that is either providing him monthly cash flow or he can cash it all out and then just have a nice retirement nest egg. Right? Wow. That's super exciting and yep. impressive. When you're talking, one of my last clients, one of those same deal, right? Kind of 
but paycheck to paycheck, but they were able to kind of squeeze in and get into this mortgage. We didn't think that they could afford much, but they found a nice starter condo. We did luck out. It was summertime again, two years ago, and they yeah. were able to get some closing costs covered for them. Mm -hmm. Well, they just sold it and made 50, made, so after everything, made $50,000 right. in two years. Right. And again, we know market and all that kind of stuff, right. but it had already shifted when we listed. So right. they would never have been able to save yeah. that much money. And that's another thing. If you can find a way to get into the market, right? Whether it's down payment assistance programs or whatever yep. you need, you're never going to out save the pace of the market. Right. And that's what people don't understand. I need to save a little bit more, save a little bit more, save a little bit more, or like to your point, jumping that thousand dollars. And I'm more risky and stuff like that, but I always thought I'm never putting a thousand dollars away each month in savings. Right. You know, that's just was never my mindset. So if you take it from me, that's great. And that's right. how I've been able to build wealth is by taking a little bit extra risk in my mortgage and not yeah. house poor, but just yeah. enough that I can force myself into think, some savings. Yeah, I think we all like people tend to look at their finances as they are gonna be what they are today forever. Right. right. And that's just not the case right? Raises happen, bonuses, all kinds of things, new promotions at work and that. And so I try to get people thinking a little bit bigger mm -hmm. because it's very easy to get trapped in the, I make $50,000 a year and this is what I'm going to make forever. And that's just not the case. Right. So if you can just stretch a little bit, when I bought my first house, I was a little scared, mm -hmm. but after two years, after raises and that type of thing, I wasn't scared anymore. Right. Yeah. And I owned that home for five years and made a nice profit that I could roll into my next house. That's one of the decisions I regret in my life because if I would have kept that house, I would have had it paid off years ago and it would be worth about $750,000 right now. So bad decision to sell that at that time, but that was where I was at in life at yep. that time. I needed that money for the down payment on the next house. The point is, it's very important for people to understand is that through appreciation of real estate, you can change your life way beyond what you can imagine, mm -hmm. right? And it's just a matter of taking the step to talk to somebody to figure out, okay, what do I need to do? We don't want to do anything other than get you into a home and get you in the game. And right. plus you get to own a home, right? Which is a nice benefit because then you can do what you want with it, paint it, whatever. But we want to get you into that game. We're not doing this because we're just trying to make money. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're doing this for. We're doing this because we want to help people create a life-changing wealth situation for themselves. Number one, the ability to learn and the ability to be coached. Those are the two biggest things mm -hmm. because it's not rocket science. Like There's somebody else that has done it before you and they've done it at a very high level. And so you just need to be willing to learn from those people, mm -hmm. right? I think also you have to have a servant's heart and an educator's heart. You need to really want to help people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it gets tough because sometimes you're literally helping somebody with something that has nothing to do with mortgages. You're helping them get their budget in line so that they can even start to save money. Mm -hmm. right or you're helping them fix their credit or things like that so they can even start to think about buying a home but my biggest goal through getting more people in the business is I'm older at some point 10 15 years down the line whatever I will retire and so I want to bring in other people and coach other people so that I know that the industry is in good hands going forward I think one of the things that's big for us is we're always looking to grow. I'm always looking to bring people into this industry that I think have the same passion of helping people create wealth through real estate. They have an educator's heart where they really want people to understand what they're doing and making good financial decisions. So we're growing in that way. Also, obviously doing videos and things, growing on social mm -hmm. media, it's kind of a must now and want to get out all of the stuff that's trapped in my mind and knowledge that I've gained over the years, get that out on there on social media and just want to help more people, like I said, achieve that American dream, right? Mm -hmm. and there's so much noise out out there and we talked about it and like people that are thinking that all oh, the housing market is going to crash and stuff the thing that's sad about that is there's people who buy into that and then almost always they end up losing 
if they would have not listened to the negativity, if they would have not listened to the noise and reached out to a professional like you or me to talk about the market and really look at what's best for their family, they would have come out way ahead. Yeah. Right. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm really trying to get that message out there more and obviously still very community based. I mean, I, I do lend in all states, but most of my business is right here in, in Renton mm -hmm. and, and the surrounding area. So my favorite book, bar none, is The Go-Giver. I'm reading right now a new book by Ed Milet that's called The Power of One More. That's a good one too, but The Go-Giver is my go-to. I have it on audio, I have it on my desk all the time. And the, the gist of The Go-Giver is give more than you expect in return. That has been something that has changed my life, reading that book is instead of focusing on sales goals and things like that, even to this day, I still remind myself, okay, if you want to do more loans, you need to provide more value, right? Yeah. And so that's what uh, what my goals are. And it also, um, I think is good for, even if you're not in sales or not in business, I think it's just a great book. It's an easy read. It's a great book for everybody to keep in mind especially in this day, not everybody is out for just themselves. I think there's a lot of people out there that really enjoy helping people and providing value to other people. I agree. There you well, go. awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. This has been so fun. Yeah. And, uh, thanks for we'll having me. Do it again.